Hello guys, this is Avinash and you are watching Everything Metallurgy. So friends, in this video we will be discussing about the last two oxidation reactions or I mean, I mean to say the last two removal in the steel making. Okay, so that is dephosphorization and the other one is desulfurization. So first we will discuss about this dephosphorization. So, dephosphorization is nothing but the removal of phosphorus from the metal. Okay. So, this is most ref important refining reaction because as we know, phosphorus will be leading to coal shortness. Okay. So, generally phosphorus has an atomic number of 15. The atomic number of phosphorus is 15. So, in order to attain the stable configuration, either it may be gaining 3 electrons or it may be losing 5 electrons okay in order to get stable octet configuration so that means either it will be forming p minus 3 or it will be forming p plus 3 p plus 5 so these are the two possibilities of phosphorus attaining its stable form so this means that the phosphorus can be removed under both reducing as well as oxidizing Okay, so we know phosphorus will be present in the form of dissolved, dissolved phosphorus in the hot metal. So to remove that, we can use either oxidizing conditions or the reducing conditions. Anything can be used. But the phosphorus removal is generally practiced in its oxidizing condition because the reducing conditions are very hazardous and also not practical and if you see the steel making also in the steel making every reaction is an oxidation reaction yes the all the reactions or the all the removal of these elements that is taking place in primary steel making is oxidizing so that is why it is beneficial to remove the phosphorus also in oxidizing condition so what will be the reaction the reaction would be 2p plus 5o gives rise to p2o5 so this will be the reaction of dephosphorization okay this is the reaction of dephosphorization so we'll now discuss the conditions as we are gonna discussing the favorable conditions for removal of each element so here we'll discuss the condition of phosphorus removal so first of all this is an oxidation reaction so it is an exothermic reaction in nature so obviously it will be favorable at low temperature we have discussed why according to Lee Chatelier principle at low temperature the exothermic reactions will be moving forward okay and one more thing is as I said the activity of FeO in the slag that means we need more amount of oxygen for the slag metal reaction to take place if we increase the activity of FeO then what happens it releases more oxygen which can be reacted with the phosphorus that means high activity of feo in the sense it is nothing but an oxidizing slag okay high activity of feo is nothing but it indicates the oxidizing slag because you know feo content of the slag only determines the oxidizing and reducing potential of the slag okay so for efficient dephosphorization generally the content of FeO should be about 15 to 16 percent okay the for efficient dephosphorization the content of FeO should be ranging between 15 to 16 percent and one more thing is the According to this uh, variation in FeO content, the dephosphorization ratio increases with increase in FeO content, reaches a maximum value at these values and again decreases. For example, if we take graph, this will be the dephosphorization ratio or here it will be the FeO content and this maximum will reach at 15 to 16 percentage okay so this is this will be the variation of dephosphorization okay dephosphorization ratio is nothing but the amount of phosphorus present in slag to the amount of phosphorus that is present in the final hot metal 
we will discuss the problems also regarding that so this is the condition of dephosphorization so one more thing that is required here is as p2o5 is an acidic oxide the slag should be very basic in nature so the activity of cao should be high the activity of cao should be high so for this we generally add some extra lime okay some free dissolved lime is added so the lime is added and it is getting dissolved into the slag okay that is how we can increase the activity of cao so this indicates high basicity of slag high basicity now why we require this high activity of cao is because on formation of this p2o5 it is an acidic oxide so the in order to decrease the activity of p2o5 in the slag then only the forward reaction will take place okay in order to decrease the activity of p2o5 in slag we are providing this extra cao so this cao react with this and also decreases the viscosity because this is an acidic oxide it forms a hexagonal network and increases the viscosity of the slag which is again undesirable so this cao reacts with it and reduces the activity of p2o5 in the slag so that the slag can act as sink for p2o5 otherwise uh, simply we can say the viscosity is also decreased because cao is a network breaker okay so these are the different conditions or favorable conditions for the removal of phosphorus okay so now we'll ju just see the industrial practice of dephosphorization will be done along with the carbon that means carbon and phosphorus will be removed simultaneously okay how and all we'll see in our lance design okay so simultaneous removal of sulfur and phosphorus simultaneous removal of sulfur and phosphorus okay so okay let's see here what are the different conditions we know for carbon removal okay both are oxidizing c plus o gives rise to co 2p plus 5o gives rise to p2o5 so both requires the oxidizing conditions okay both require oxidizing conditions but what is the extra condition for phosphorus it requires basic and limey slag why we have just discussed and for phosphorus removal it requires basic and limey slag so this basic and limey slag will react with the p2o5 and decrease the activity and also maintains the viscosity okay so both are possible simultaneously if there is a slag in which the activity of p2o5 is less okay so the activity of p2o5 should be less in the slag so that carbon anyhow it goes into the gaseous form it forms co whereas the p2o5 should go into the slag only so the activity of p2o5 in the slag should be less and one more thing the temperature should be low enough because both are exothermic in nature so the temperature should be low okay low temperature so this is the different conditions that are utilized for simultaneous removal of carbon and phosphorus okay so generally this will be done in a steel making practice that's why we have discussed all these things oxidizing conditions the slag should contain less amount of p2o5 or the activity of p2o5 is less or again low temperature okay so this is about the simultaneous removal of carbon and dephosphorization okay. the next one is desulfurization desulfurization is very important because sulfur will be causing hot shortness it will form what is hot shortness hot shortness is nothing but forming a low melting point constituent 
which will be melted at the grain boundaries and the brittle nature of the material increases so because of this formation of FES the sulfur reacts with iron and forms FES and it will be locating in the grain boundaries and resulting in hot shortness so this is called hot shortness and uh, generally most of the sulfur okay the only element that is not removed the only impurity that will not be removed in the primary steel making is phosphorus sorry is sulfur okay so whatever is the sulfur content present in the hot metal it should be pre-treated okay it should be pre-treated so that the sulfur content of the hot metal is reduced and before going into primary steel making or BOF the final sulfur content I mean the desired chemistry is containing the minimum amount of sulfur that is should be there in the final steel okay so how we'll just see so the dissolved sulfur will react with O minus 2 from the slag whatever slag is present it will be reacting with O minus 2 and it will be reduced okay this is a reduction reaction as from 0 it is moving to minus 2 okay so that is why the removal of sulfur is not possible in BOF because all are oxidation reactions whereas sulfur is reduction reaction okay so here we'll uh, discuss about the conditions fastly so as it is a reduction reaction it is endothermic in nature endothermic in nature so the endothermic reactions require high temperature the endothermic reactions require high temperature okay, to be favorable and one more thing is this O minus 2 okay should be more that means the activity of oxygen coming from the slag activity of oxygen coming from the slag should be more that means the activity of O minus 2 in the slag O minus 2 is nothing but uh, the other oxides for example FeO, CaO all these contains O minus 2 ions in the slag so that means these are generally basic slag this is generally basic slag okay so all those ions whatever I have discussed contains O minus 2 and those are basic oxides so it is highly basic slag okay but this is the dissolved oxygen the dissolved oxygen should be less okay so low dissolved oxygen in the hot metal low dissolved oxygen in the hot metal because if this is more what happens the backward reaction takes place the oxygen from the in the metal reacts with the s minus 2 in the slag and again the reversal of sulfur into the hot metal take place so that is why low oxygen content in the hot metal should be required otherwise backward reaction will be taking place okay if this oxygen is more the backward reaction takes place that is why the oxygen must be removed from the steel or from the hot metal for efficient desulfurization okay so these are the different conditions okay high temperature high basicity and low oxygen in the hot metal okay so low oxygen in the hot metal is nothing but you can say that it is low feo content in the slag we know this feo will be forming fe plus o so the release of this oxygen should be less so the feo content in the slag should also be less so these are the different conditions okay so now there are some reagents that are used so that this e e reaction may take place this means this O minus 2 not only comes from the slag but there are some reagents that are used for desulfurization there are some reagents that are used so the reagents that are used are Soda ash, 
okay soda ash because it generates some dense fumes in the uh, metal and this soda disposes disposal of this soda into the slag will be taking place okay so the next one is calcium carbide calcium carbide and also magnesium granules are used as reagents magnesium granules so these are the different reagents or you can call it desulfurization or desulfurizing agents desulfurizing agents okay so these can decrease the calcium and magnesium specially can decrease the sulfur content to a very low value okay so these are the different reagents and one more thing when this desulfurization is taking place as i already said it should be done before the primary steel making that means it should be done either in the after the tapping of blast furnace that is the ladles okay ladles that containing the hot metal or it can be done on the blast furnace runner okay it can be efficiently done on the blast furnace runner that means the path of the hot metal after tapping okay this is generally most preferable okay the whatever is the this reagents are there they just add into the these uh, blast furnace runner and what happens adequate mixing of these reagents into the hot metal take place and desulfurizing take place and this also saves time and also increases the ladle availability okay so this is the desulfurization and uh, i have discussed about the dephosphorization ratio right so similarly there is desulfurization ratio also all these are known as partition coefficient partition coefficient or here for desulfurization we are discussing so it is called index of desulfurization index of desulfurization so now what is this this will be equal to the weight percentage of sulfur in slag divided by the weight percentage of sulfur in the hot metal after desulfurization okay not initial but after the operation so remember this okay this is known as partition coefficient index of desulfurization or desulfurization ratio so similarly for Dephosphorization: the weight percent of phosphorus present in the slag by the weight percent of phosphorus in the hot metal after the dephosphorization. Okay, so this is about desulfurization and dephosphorization. There will be some important numericals based on this, which I'll discuss at the end of the steel making lectures. Okay, so this is how dephosphorization and desulfurization is done. Okay, so. If you like this video, please give me a like and please share to all the gate metallurgy aspirants and let them know about everything metallurgy. Thank you guys.